Everybody, this is Furch. You know, one of the things I do hate the most, um, and it is as a retailer and as a reader, is I hate delays. And uh, delays are, you know, the, the problem is not just comics getting delayed. The problem is that the delay itself often seems completely mysterious as to what's going on, when the comic's coming out, what happened, is, uh, what, you know, what, what, what's going on. And in a lot of cases, from what I found, is people who are comic customers, comic fans, are completely reasonable people. When it comes to, hey, you know, the artist got sick. You know, Chris Bacalo gets, uh, what, COVID. I think he got COVID. He got very sick. I, or, or multiple things happened to, to Chris, and the title was delayed. And people are like, damn it, where's the comic? But then they hear, like, well, the artist got, got very sick. And if you ask most people that I've interacted with, uh, both as a retailer and kind of, you know, along with fans, 99 times out of 100, if you say, hey, you know, we've got this comic, uh, we're on issue five, it's a six issue limited series, you know, two more issues to go. But the artist is, uh, got sick and can't draw, or there's a death in the family, or some tragedy occurred, and so the comic's going to be three months late, or we can switch artists and get it out mostly on time. The vast majority of retailers, readers, everyone will say, yeah, we'll wait, we'll wait the three months. It's okay, yeah, we don't like waiting, but we understand we understand uh, what happened here and that it's, um, you know, it, that, that things happen in life. Thanks for communicating, they might say. And that, so that's, that's my experience of, um, of, of kind of just generally what people want. I'm curious in the comments below if you feel differently, let me know. But generally, people like to have for the creative team to see it through. If there's some kind of tragedy or some event or some, some problem that happens to the creative team, A, most people are very understanding, and B, they, they'll wait. But in a lot of cases, we don't know what's going on. And it doesn't feel like things, are, you know, it's a creative team's fault, or at least it's not the writer or the artist's fault. The writer and the artist are happily doing other comics while this one is delayed. So what exactly is going on? So this mail, this viewer, uh, kind of comments on it. says, hey, Perch, love the show. Thanks for the content. My question is, how do you combat lengthy delays in comics? Comics seem to readily disappear without a trace or warning. For example, Jupiter's Legacy Requiem number 7. What is the expected date? Dark Knights of Steel number 8. Possibly November 1. Rogues number 4. Maybe October 11th. We all know that comics are labor-intensive and delays happen, but Jesus, such an opaque release schedule is frustrating for a reader. Comics are periodicals, yet they constantly miss the mark on regular intervals of portion of periodicals. They are not alone in mass media delays. However, for a 10-minute read, months and months of waiting for the next issue is a hell of a proposition. I don't watch generic Disney Plus show episode two only to find out there's a question mark on the calendar for episode three. They gave us a schedule prior to whatever season it is, and they normally stick with it. I think always, right? I think the only thing that's interrupted kind of a streaming release schedule, and I, I don't believe it's happened with certainly, well, Netflix doesn't delay, but HBO. Um, I mean, there's been cases where the entire production gets shut down and they decide to start releasing the season anyway in the hopes of catching up and they don't make it. That's happened. Uh, there's also been the issue of, uh, you know, news bumping. You know, there's a terrorist attack or presidential election or something. And they, or and sometimes those are both. Am I right? Ha, ha, ha. Anyway. Um, but, but those, you know, important news items can delay things. So there's lots of different things that can go on. But generally speaking, um, you know, most of the streaming shows come out on time. But yeah, Jesus, can you imagine how annoying it'd be? You're like, you're, you know, it's She-Hulk, ep, you know, episode four. All right, looking forward to episode five, but episode five is TBD, and it's like next week, next month, five months. That would kill so many shows immediately if that's what they did. There's a lot of shows to be like, yeah, no, no, we, 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 a, we don't want to wait. B, if you're going to make us wait, we're going to probably forget the show exists. Anyway, back to the mail. So they gave us a schedule prior to whatever season it is, and they normally stick right to it. What is a way to rectify this issue in comics? More communication to readers regarding release date and any possible delays. Head toward a graphic novel approach, i.e. six-issue collection, etc. As a reader who returned to comics after decades away, it is absolutely archaic way to keep readers engaged with a comic. I would love to hear your take, and thanks again. You know one thing that really helped um, keep comics on a release schedule, and they would come out like clockwork? Uh, the newsstand. The newsstand, uh, you know, you, it's funny because you can go and, and there's a Twitter account called uh, Comics in History or 
on this day, comics history, or something like that. Basically, it publishes the comics that came out on this day back in the past. And if you follow this uh, Twitter account for any length of time, what you find is that the comics are coming out with hilarious uh, regularity during the 80s. Meaning it's it's the first week of October, and that means Avengers is out. And sure as hell, that comic will just always be there on that week, on that date, from 20 years ago. Every you know first week of the month, here comes the Avengers. And it's always there. Um, the newsstand was good about that, and, and the reason why that took place is because there was a lot of money to the newsstand. These, the newsstand had been sold, you know, 100,000 copies, going to go through the stores, and, uh, you know, you get your, you know, we're going to have the Avengers for you first week, and the Hulk the second week, and Iron Man the third week, Captain America the fourth week, and they just, they, they, they committed to a schedule, and then those comics hit that schedule, like clockwork. And that was one of the great things about the newsstand. It, it created a sense of regularity. It created a sense of reliability to this entire business that really it hasn't seen since. So it's a good thing. But with the newsstand gone and it, the direct market is now kind of the way to go, you know, the, uh, the publishers don't want to delay a comic. The publishers are not sitting there going, hey, you know, it'll be funny this month. Let's just screw everybody. I know a lot of people are really interested in this next chapter of Captain Marvel. But uh, sorry, sorry, all you dozens of fans. You're, you're not going to get it because we're just going to delay it for three months for no reason. Sorry, nobody does that. I, I mean, the, the reason why you see delays is because somebody dropped the ball, the, t the work didn't get in on time, the printer didn't get the files, uh, somebody was supposed to be, you know, writing their comic, but instead they're, they're on Twitter and filming a documentary for Disney Plus, and so you have to bring in... You know, poor Jim Zub in order to ghostwrite the. No, I'm just kidding, Jim. But anyway, uh, that, there's that, that's what happens is that you get these delays that are a result of kind of basic lack of control. And why does that occur? Well, because unlike the newsstand, these comics aren't selling hundreds of thousands of copies, and nobody at the top is drilling into people's heads like, "Hey, we would like to keep the uh, 100 to 150 thousand copy." you know, run going on for some of these titles like West Coast Avengers and Rom Space Knight and Ben Grimm the Thing. We, we want to keep selling 125, 130,000 copies of these titles. Yeah, some are going to get returned. But in order to do that, it means we're going to have to commit to this little thing called professionalism, which means we're going to have to get the comic out on time come hell or high water. And and there was a, I remember, God, I, I'm trying to remember the, the assistant editor. It wasn't Wheezy. When it, maybe it's Bobby Chase. I don't know. Anyway, one of the uh, assistant editors early in her career um, used to make this comment of, you know, come rain or hail or sleet or sail. I, that, that rhymes, but doesn't make any sense. The comics must go out. And it's like they, they, they had the, these, Im these images of like, you know, mailman trudging through 18 feet of snow, fighting grizzly bears with an axe. So he can get those Marvel comics to the house of little Jimmy. So he can read, uh, you know, and, and have a sexual awakening as he opens up his copy of Rogue in the Savage Land when she was humping Magneto. Like, uh, you know, sorry, um, not me. Anyway, so that that's the problem is there's just the money isn't there. The volume isn't there. And if the money isn't there and the volume isn't there, then the diligence to get something out come hell or high water on time goes away. It's like, oh, this title's going to be delayed by a month. Well, that sucks. Well, how much is that going to cost us? Well, like $12,000. Oof. I don't know, man. i try and do better next time. All right, I will. Yeah, no, that, that's kind of how it goes. And it's not to say there's not good people working in the distribution publish. Of course there are. But there's not a sense that if you don't get this comic out, the world's going to come to an end. And I can tell you from people who worked in uh, Jim Shooter's run, you did have the impression that the comic didn't get out on time. The world might end, or at least he might, you know, pummel you with a with a board like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Like he he, you just got the feeling bad things could occur. And so it, it's you know, if today suddenly comic books were in the newsstand and every copy of comics was selling, you know, one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand as a low benchmark, if that was a world we were living in. 
then you would see these delays would go away. They'd become a lot less opaque. And suddenly you would see some pretty decent diligence in getting these comics out. So to me, yes, I've noticed this. It sucks. And that's really the only antidote. You got to get more money, more distribution in this thing. And that's what's going to cause people to care. Otherwise, I, I don't know. People are going to be like, yeah, man, it's just comics. It's just comics, man. Thanks for listening.